Once upon a time, in England, 1796, there was a beautiful milkmaid, hair shining, skin flawless, except for that oozing postule on her arm, for that milkmaid had cowpox, a relatively mild disease she got, well, from cows. Well, a doctor named Edward Jenner noticed the milkmaids were not getting the incredibly deadly smallpox, which killed roughly one in five people who got it. He thought perhaps getting the safer cowpox prevented them from getting smallpox. So he took the pus off the milkmaid's arm and inoculated it into a boy. Yes, an eight-year-old boy. And it worked. Scholars say the story is likely part fable, but mostly true. And at least in Western culture, this is accepted as the first ever vaccination. The word vaccine literally comes from the Latin word for cow. And since then, scientists have learned a lot more about immunities and vaccines. Today, there are three basic types of vaccine. There's what's called an inactivated vaccine. We'll call this the disco vaccine because it's dead, but your body can still recognize it and fight against it. Then there's an attenuated vaccine where a virus is weakened enough to not cause illness. I call this the parent of young children during a pandemic vaccine because the virus is impeccably exhausted to the point where it can't work very hard. This is used for measles, mumps, rubella, and chickenpox. Finally, the latest type of vaccine, and one you want to pay attention to, is called subunit vaccine. It's like a Kit Kat. You just break off a small piece of the virus, like a protein or a sugar, send that into the body to mount up a defense against that specific part, which is enough for your body to fend off future virus, should you encounter it. And this is the kind of vaccine both Pfizer and Moderna have created. Okay, you know that picture every news outlet on the planet has used of the SARS-CoV-2 virus? You see those fuzzy barbs sticking out of the virus? Well, those are called spike proteins. They're the arms of the virus. And it is that that this vaccine will attack. The spike protein is a protein on the surface of the virus that it uses to attach to cells in our lungs. If that attachment doesn't occur, the virus can't cause an infection. But the Pfizer vaccine is even more James Bondy than that, because it doesn't inject the spike proteins into your arm. It injects messenger RNA, the code or the recipe that tells your body to make those spike proteins itself. And then your body will attack what it just made. I know, pretty cool. We think about the spike protein as a lock that the key has to fit into. The way the immune system works is it, by chance, makes a thousand billion keys with di slightly different shapes. And if you get a thousand billion chances at almost anything, a few of those are gonna fit into that lock. This way, once your body finds the right antibody to match that spike protein, your body trips an alarm and starts building an army of antibodies specifically designed to block that spike. And I know a lot of you are wondering, is it safe to inject that into your arm? Well, first, Pfizer reports that out of a group of 43,000 participants in the vaccine trial, the worst that happened was 3.8% of people experienced fatigue and 2% experienced headache. Granted, that's the short-term version. We don't know what happens long-term yet. Another question, does it actually work? Well, the vaccine proved to protect 95% of those who took it from getting COVID-19. Is that good? Yeah. According to the CDC, the flu shot's effectiveness is about 44% on average over the last 10 years. Chickenpox vaccine is 92% effective, measles 97%, and polio 99%. So for a first swing, that's a grand slam. And imagine the coronavirus vaccine was developed and tested in eight months. The previous record was for the mumps, and that took four years. That's like someone running a one-minute mile next year in Tokyo. And it is this science and collective effort that will someday show the curve fall as fast as it went up. That will be a great day. That will be a great day. And I, I'm, I'm really optimistic that it's coming. For Care 11 News, I'm Chris Arapsky.